What's going on my friends? For today's episode, we're taking a look at my Tudor Black Bay, um, the steel version. I've already done a full review on it, so I'll have the link to that review in the description below. But the purpose of today's episode is to just look back at the past year, see how my thoughts have changed. The bottom line up front is that I still absolutely love it. It's a watch that's gonna be in my collection forever, but that doesn't mean it is without fault. So I just wanna talk about those things. So let's get right into it. So I'm not really sure how I should begin this episode. I guess the easiest thing to do is just go over the pros and cons, um, if there are any cons. But actually, before we do that, let's take a quick 360 of the watch just to see how it has fared for me over this last year. I have not babied it at all. And uh, one thing you're gonna notice immediately is on the side, there is no mirror polish anymore. And that's because I removed it. Some of you are gonna think, oh my God, what the hell are you thinking? That's a couple thousand dollar watch. You know, how are you gonna resell it? Well, reselling was never part of this watch's destiny. I already knew from the very beginning I was gonna keep it forever. And quite honestly, I like it much better without the mirror polish on the side. So now let's go over the cons. Now keep in mind, these cons are very nitpicky. You know, they're not going to ruin the overall wearing experience for you. These are all just personal opinions of my own. But con number one, I'm gonna say is the overall size. The case height or thickness is, I measured it at 14.6 millimeters. And you know, a normal person would be like, that's not very thick at all. But when you sort of get spoiled by watch collecting and you become one of those watch uh, watch obsessed addicts you know 14.6 does become quite thick when you compare it to other watches in the same category and in my opinion there was no reason why Tudor couldn't have released this watch with you know a 12 or sub 12 millimeter case now I know that's what the BB 58 was for um, but in the BB 58 version they never came out with this model so it, that's a moot point and then I guess con number two, um, and I think a lot of you are gonna agree with me, was the bracelet. There's nothing wrong with it. Functionally, it works fine. And again, I'm being kind of nitpicky, but I just didn't like it. You know, I felt like it was subpar considering you're spending upwards to about four grand. I just felt like it wasn't four grand worth of bracelet. There was nothing wrong with the hardware. You know, everything works fine. The clasp works good and the safety tab um, was buttery smooth. It left me unimpressed and I'm much happier with this aftermarket strap code bracelet. But aside from that, that's all I have to complain about this watch. And if you're into watches, that's you know pretty successful when you're considering all the other possible things that could have gone wrong, they didn't. Um, this Tudor Black Bay has just been an all-star performer. Two things that I realized while owning this watch is number one, it has really launched my collecting strategy um, for the better. I think I have become a better collector and much more knowledgeable collector. I'm getting into tutors. Um, but on the flip side of that, I think it's also sort of spoiled or ruined me as a collector because my standards are now much higher. I don't enjoy cheaper budget watches as much as I did before the tutor. And while that may not necessarily be a bad thing, I guess in some perspectives or some ways, you might consider me um, officially a watch snob now. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna look down on lesser watches or less expensive watches, but for my own personal collection, I am going to be much more picky specifically because of the standard that the Tudor Black Bay has shown me. For those of you that watch my channel, you might be familiar with my litmus test when it comes to watches. So right away, right out the box, the two things that I look for from a watch is the bezel action and then the crown action. And in this case, with the Tudor Black Bay, both of those were the best examples of bezel and crown action that I had ever experienced. And I've spoken to several other watch owners that are you know, more Rolex collectors. And even they have told me that the Tudor quality of the bezel action is not far off from Rolex quality. 
And that's saying something considering this is like a fraction of the price of a Rolex. And so in some ways, experiencing this tutor has sort of ruined me because it's impossible for me not to compare any other watch that I come across with the tutor. So for example, or a perfect example, is this newly acquired um, Squale 1545 that I just bought. Um, ignore the naked bezel, I'm still in the process of modifying it, but you know, as soon as I received it and I started turning the bezel, the first thing I think about is, oh well, you know, how does it compare to the um, Black Bay, you know, the Tudor Black Bay? And um, in unbiased opinion, you know, this is a fantastic bezel, but I find myself constantly comparing watches like this to my Tudor Black Bay, and um, frankly, they just can't beat it, you know, it's such a well-made good quality bezel and then same thing with that crown action i mean look at this i don't know if you can see that hopefully i can get some close-ups later on but that crown stem you know it it's so thick i mean i know that that itself is not the crown stem but it's so solid everything from hand winding the movement to changing the time it is the most beautiful thing ever and talking about the movement the movement has really redefined the definition of beater watch to me. I think a lot of you can relate to my previous definition of beater watch, where a beater watch was sort of like a very cheaply made watch that you don't care at all if it were to break um, when you're doing heavy labor. And so, or, you know, that might not have been your definition, but that was my definition. It was just a shitty watch, a watch of such low quality that I could not care less if it fell apart while I was, you know, just doing any kind of hard labor. Uh, a watch that you could literally just beat up and throw away. So that was my definition of beater watch. But the Tudor Black Bay has redefined that definition because now I have experienced a watch with a movement that could handle or withstand a beating more so than any other cheap beater watch and still keep on ticking. And that's attributed to the traversing bridge, the silicon balance spring, and the extremely tight tolerances that Tudor um, provides with this watch. And again, that is another thing that is so beautiful because you're spending several thousands of dollars for a watch that can handle anything and everything and i absolutely love that nothing frustrates me more than seeing somebody spend like half a year's salary on a watch and they do nothing but baby it and keep it in the safe and you know i'm not going to judge them. well you, actually you know what screw it i am going to judge them i judge them i'm not going to say anything about it but deep down inside i'm going to judge them because i'm like what kind of life is that you know you spend that much money not even able to fully enjoy a watch. And to me, enjoying a watch is being able to wear it and not worry about it. And it helps accentuate aspects of your life. And I want to discuss me removing this mirror polish again real quick. So the reason why I did it was because over time, when I redefined the definition of beater watch, I felt like a mirror polish, a high mirror polish, just wasn't fitting with the Tudor Black Bay. In my opinion, this watch is meant to be worn, beat up, and scuffed up, and um, having a brushed finish is just more um, fitting with that type of lifestyle. Another thing is I felt that the 14.6 millimeter case height was just too thick to have such a decorative finish. Um, and I think that's a reason why a lot of people consider the Tudor Black Bay as slab sided because you've got such a thick case thickness, but then a mirror polish that just doesn't fit with that case height. But in this case, I feel like with the brush finish, you lose that slab sided quality and it just pairs so well with the overall case design. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I got to say about um, this last year or reviewing this last year with the Tudor Black Bay. Um, all in all, it's been a fantastic experience. I am grateful that I was able to get one of these and truly experience uh, a new level of watch quality. I think Tudor is a fantastic watch to really get started in the world of luxury. And again, like I said before, while I don't necessarily think it is like a luxury watch, you cannot deny that it belongs in the luxury category. 
I will say that it is entry level and that's not in any way derogatory. I think it's entry level because it's readily available to everyone. And so somebody just getting into watches, they're gonna be exposed to Tudor very quickly. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think this is a phenomenal choice to start off with your first uh, luxury watch. And it's only gonna get worse from there. So anyways, those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, share me your thoughts. If you have a Tudor Black Bay, um, if you have a Black Bay 58, or even if you don't have one and you've just been considering it and this is something you've been eyeing, I will say if this specific steel model is one that has been sort of on your wish list, it's discontinued. So I don't know if that means it's gonna get harder and harder to get, but it is still available now. And the way that the market is looking right now, it looks like prices are dropping. So if you've got the money and you don't have to, you know, go in the red to get one, then I recommend getting it. You're not going to regret it. Um, but that's it for now. I'll catch you guys in the next episode and feel free to join any of my other social media groups. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.